So in this video, we're going to look at something called the zero product property and then solving by factoring. So let's start out with this question. It says solve this equation x times y equals zero. And then that first question says what must be true about either x or y for this equation to be true. So if we look at this, this says that we have x times y equals zero. And so if you know anything about math, if you multiply two things together to equal zero, that anything times zero is zero. And so the question is, what must be true about either x or y for this equation to be true? That either x or y, either x or y must be zero. Oops, zero. Um, it could be that they're both zero. It could be that both x and y are both zero, but at least one of them must be zero in order for this to be true. So let's pretend x equals 3, then y has to equal 0. If y equals 0, then x could be anything, really. It doesn't have to be 0. x could be, uh, I'll just write anything. So we've got two kind of examples here. If you know that one of them is not 0, then that forces the other one to be 0. If you know one of them is 0, then the other thing could be anything. So that's called a zero product property. If you want a more definitive definition, here it is. It says if a, b equals zero, then a equals zero, or b equals zero, or both of them equals zero. So when you're asked to solve for x using the zero product property, all you're doing is you're looking at, there's two things here that are multiplied together to give you zero. Either x or x plus two has to equal zero. So basically what you do is you write down two equations, x equals 0 and x plus 2 equals 0. Well, this one's already solved. We don't have to do any math for that. The other one, we just have to subtract 2 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 2. So for this equation, we have two different answers. We have x equals 0 and x equals negative 2. All right, let's look at the one next to it. Here we have 2x times x minus 7 equals 0. Well, either one of these has to equal 0 in order for the equation to be true. And that's because they're multiplied together in between there. That's, that's that whole idea is that you have two things multiplied equaling 0. So we've got 2x equals 0 and x minus 7 equals 0. For this first one, we're going to divide by 2 on both sides. And 0 divided by 2 is 0. For the next one, we're going to add 7 to both sides, and we get x equals 7. So this has two answers. One of the answers is 0, and one is 7. All right, and then the last example here, we have two things multiplied together, x minus 2 and 2x plus 1. So I'm going to set each of those things equal to 0. I think I said 2x minus 1. I meant to say 2x plus 1. So I'm going to, on the first one, add 2 to both sides. Pretty straightforward. We get x equals 2, so that's one of the two answers. On the other one, I'm going to subtract 1, and we get 2x equals negative 1. And then we're going to divide by 2, and we get x equals negative 1 half. So those are our two answers, 2 and negative 1 half. All right, so... Um, let's look at the last thing we're going to look at here. So this says factor, then use the zero product property to solve for x. So this is kind of the, the essence of what I want to get through in this video. And so we're going to factor each of these equations, and then we are going to solve using the zero product property. So let me grab my pen, my purple pen, and we're going to factor this one. So to get x squared, I know I have to have x times x. And then I'm looking for things that multiply to 12 and add to 7. Uh, add. So let's look at the factors of 12. We have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. 
and 3 and 4 is going to be my combo that adds to 7. So x plus 3, x plus 4. All right, so once we have it factored, then we say, well, we know that these two things multiplied together equals 0. So then I have x plus 3 equals 0, and x plus 4 equals 0. Then I subtract 3 from both sides, I get x equals negative 3. Subtract 4 from both sides, x equals negative 4. So those are my two answers for this one. All right, let's look at the other two. What I'd encourage you to do here is maybe pause the video, try factoring these and solving them, and then unpause and see if you got your answers right. So I'm going to look at the second problem. I'm going to set up my factors. I get x and x, and then I'm looking for the factors of 28, which are 1 and 28, 2 and 14, and 4 and 7. And I want them to multiply to negative 28. So that means that I have to have one positive and one negative to get multiplied to negative 28. And it has to add to negative 3. So that's going to be negative 7 and positive 4. Uh, I already have the x there. I don't need to do an x. So x plus 4, x minus 7. And then if I set these equal to 0. I subtract 4 from the first one. I get x equals negative 4. And then I'm going to add 7 to both sides and I get x equals 7. Alright, uh, last one. We are going to, let's set up the factors. We're looking at what are the factors of 36. And so it's 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, and 6 and 6. Now, uh, this is positive 36, so I know I have to have two positives or two negatives, because negative times negative is positive. And I want it to give me negative 13. So that means I have to have two negatives. There, let's see, so that's going to be negative 4 and negative 9. That's going to add up to negative 13. So x minus 4, x minus 9. And then I'm going to uh, set each of these equal to 0. Once you do a couple of them, you kind of get the hang of it. And then add 4 to both sides. I get x equals 4 and x equals 9. All right. So that's basically it. Now, um, if you notice at the bottom here, I drew some graphs, and so I want to tie this into the graph as well. And so basically what we're finding out when we say this equals zero is we're finding out, well, we know that this x squared equation is going to look like a parabola. And when we set it equal to zero, we're finding where it crosses the x-axis. So on the first one, it's going to cross at negative three and at negative four. So it's going to look something like that. On the second one, it's going to cross at negative 4, so really technically negative 4, 0, and then at positive 7, so 7, 0, and we're going to have a parabola that looks something like that. And then on the third one, as you can probably guess, it's going to cross at 4, 0, and at 9, 0. And so we're going to have a parabola that looks something like that. So obviously we'll get you know better and, and know exactly what the parabola looks like, where the vertex is, where the y-intercept. But really what I want you to make sure you understand is that when you find these zeros, we're finding where it crosses the x-axis. That's the main thing. All right, so that's it for zero product property and solving by factoring.